the headline here of your your report, which is better than expected growth for this year. We, we escaped the bullet or the, the worst of things. But next year, you took down your growth forecast. Why? So it basically is that this year we have uh, at the world at minus 4.4. I mean, it's it's better, but it's still a pretty dire number. Uh, and we just had better outcomes in the second quarter, slightly better outcomes, though it was an awful quarter, but we had slightly better outcomes in the second quarter. The revision down in 2021 basically reflects the fact that we have a worse recession this year. So therefore, the rebound is going to be smaller uh, going into 2021. But again, just to keep in mind, I mean, this still remains the worst recession since the Great Depression. As far as the U.S. economy is concerned, how much do you factor in whether we'll get more stimulus? I would imagine the numbers they're talking about, one to two trillion dollars, makes a huge difference. Right now, in our baseline assumption, we are assuming no uh, for the stimulus because that's what we do. I mean, unless the stimulus is announced. But we've uh, done the calculations, which is that if there is a stimulus, which is about the size of the CARES Act, then that will add about two percentage points to growth. Uh, in 2021, which means that instead of the U.S. coming returning back to 2019 levels only in 2022, it would return much faster in 2021 to 2019 levels. So it will be a significant impact. The, the IMF warns often, and including in this report, about very high unsustainable debt levels across the world. And yet, you know, at the same time, you are talking about stimulus. So how, as a policy advisor to these countries, are you suggesting you pump up the, the economies and, and help bridge us to a vaccine or to get through this pandemic in the form of more stimulus money without getting into a debt crisis. So the, it, 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 this varies across uh, many different countries, the ex extent to which you can build up uh, your debt. I mean, if you look at countries like the U.S., we believe that they have the space to increase their debt levels at a time when interest rates are exceptionally low and expected to stay that way for a long time. So low interest rates, a growth rebound next year will help with, uh, you know, stabilizing debt in many countries. And that is the need of the hour right now, not to prematurely withdraw support, and especially in countries that have the space, and the U.S. is definitely uh, one of those. But of course, there are countries that are in debt distress, there are emerging developing economies that are in, and don't have that space, and for them, it has to be a much more measured response. What about fears of a second wave? How do you think about the economic impact to the U.S. and to the global economy? So right now, what we're assuming is that there is going to be the virus. We're living with the virus, and social distancing, distancing is going to persist. But uh, you know, resurgences are going to be more like what we saw in the summer in the U.S. as opposed to what we saw in the spring. So that's a big difference. If, on the other hand, it turns out that we head to lockdowns that were more like what we saw in the spring, then that's a serious downside risk uh, to our uh, projections. China's outlook looks better. I mean, is it a factor of being able to manage and contain the virus? Is that what determines your economic outlook and whether you're in a V-shaped recovery? So China is, uh, you know, over 2020 and 21, China is going to be 10 percent above its 2019 level while most of the countries in the world are going to be below their 2019 level. What worked for China is very effective uh, containment. They were able to bring down the virus uh, spread very quickly, and very few lockdown measures are in place at this point, if any. And there's been sizable fiscal stimulus in the form especially of uh, public infrastructure uh, spending. Now, of course, we do worry about the unbalanced nature of this recovery, and the hope is that going forward, it would move more towards private demand as opposed to public sector demand. The thing with China and the U.S. is that trade frictions are still very high. And before the pandemic, the IMF was warning that trade was holding back the global economy. How do you see that picture now shaping up, given the fight over TikTok and WeChat and, and the coronavirus and the geopolitical tensions in the South China Sea? What has all that meant for the trade picture between the world's two biggest economies? And, and how much that's holding back, potentially, the recovery. So, I mean, global trade is contracting this year by over 10 percent and then recovering partially next year. Uh, it, this, as you said, I mean, the, these tensions have been growing over the past couple of years, and we see continued increases in restrictions both on trade and in terms of foreign investment. And this is one thing we do worry about as being a, as an important downside risk. As of now, that hasn't had a big impact on global trade. But again, this is an important factor 
going forward because we just need all, we need everything to work to come out of this recovery and make the world economy whole. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.